In this video, I will explain how to fill in your procedurally generated dungeon with props and enemies, and I will explain the general concepts behind the, any system that uses procedural generation. Hi, I'm Peter, and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Before we can start coding our system, we need to know what we want to create. So here is a simple dungeon that I have created by hand by placing those props and enemies around. So by looking at this example of three rooms, I can see that those columns, for example, look very good when they are in the corners, but where, when they are placed together, they hide a lot that is behind them. So I know that I should probably have some system of placing those columns in those corners. On the other hand, those crates or those barrels look very good when they are placed together near each other in groups rather than alone because it looks more natural for those. This open uh, barrel looks decent enough but it does not look that good as a group of barrels. So this means that I know that I want to place some of those objects as a group rather than as a single object. I know that those props that are bigger like those stones here or this wheel thing in this corner uh, would be much more difficult to place when we already have those smaller props around so I should probably place those bigger props first before I can place any of those smaller ones. There are some props like this tombstone or a stone board that looks especially good when it is placed near this top edge of the dungeon because there is some text here we probably could make some logic that we can read this text but if it is placed near the bottom edge we would not be able to interact with it it would not look natural so there are some props that we want to place near the edge or, or near the wall of our dungeon rather than in the center or near that bottom wall so there are all of those constraints that we need to take into account when creating our procedurally generated dungeon and filling those rooms with those props and the enemies and one thing that we can easily forget about is that if we place, for example, this prop in the path between those two rooms, now we cannot traverse from this point where there is a player to this last room. If this is the point of our exploration, if this column is non-destructible, then we kind of are stuck in this one room. So we need to also take into account when creating our dungeon that props cannot be placed in the path of the player. So the a player should always be able to traverse all the rooms. That is why it is very important to first create by hand whatever you want to generate procedurally. By the way, for this tutorial I will be using part of the Super Retro World Asset Pack from each.io, you can get it by following a link in the description. Now, to create our system for procedural generation, we want to create it in layers. So here, first layer in my system is to generate the layout of my dungeon. This is a very simple system to create just square rooms and a path between those. To create something more elaborate, check out my 2D procedural generation series. The link will be in the description. Now, when we have this, we want to analyze those rooms to know what are the parts of the room, which side is near the top edge, the bottom edge, also which are the corners and which tiles are representing the inner space of the room. When we have that, we can place some props in different spaces based on what we have found out about the dungeon, so based on the corner positions and so on. And we have, when we have that, we can finally place some enemies and a player in our dungeon. So each of those steps was one layer of our procedural generation system. Let me show you the code behind generation of the dungeon itself, so of the layout of the dungeon, so those three rooms and a path, since this is a very important step for us. Now this code will be available on GitHub, the link will be in the description, and you can download the full project from my Patreon page. So in our code, in our simple dungeon generator script, at the top we have the room size as a vector to int, and this will be by default 10 by 10 room. We have the tile map reference, room map, and the collider map so that we can place tiles representing our room and the collider around our dungeon, as well as the tile based references that will represent our room floor and the path floor, since I want to distinguish the path since we want to keep it clear of any obstacles. We will have 
have the input action reference since I'm using a, the new input system from Unity to get the input from my keyboard to start the generation process. And we have the Unity event on finished room generation. This is very important because we want to inform the next step in our procedural generation system that we have finished generating the basic layout of our dungeon. I will explain the four directions lists and dungeon data dungeon data reference later. For now, all you need to know that is that in the awake we either find this object on or created by calling add component add dungeon data. So this is a mono behavior, and we add to our input the reference to the method generate, so that when we, when I press spacebar, I will call this method. So in this generate method, this is the bulk of the logic behind generating those three rooms and a path between those. Here we are. Working with this dungeon data reference, we are resetting it and then we are adding a dungeon data dot rooms dot add and we add what is generated by the generate rectangular room at method, which takes in the vector to zero and the room size. So the first value is the center point of the room and the second is the size of the room that we want to create and this will be the rectangular room. We repeat this three times, adding three new rooms to our dungeon data. And next we create a path between those rooms by calling a method union with. This is very important because we are using hashes uh, collection type to store our data because of those cool methods that allow us to very easily uh, remove or add tiles positions to a, a collection without having any duplicates. But let's start by exploring the generate rectangular room at method. So let me right click on it and go to the definition of this method. Since we are taking here the room center position and the room size, we need to find out the half of the room position. So we create vector to int half equals room size divided by two. So now we know what is the half of the room size and we can create a hash set of the vector to int room tiles equals a new hash set. This is the feature of C sharp 9 that we do not have to repeat the type of a collection or a class. This is available from Unity 2022, I think. So we have this new hash set and the hash set is just a collection type that allows us to store vector to int values. So values that we can compare easily and it does not take duplicates, which is important when we are creating our dungeon. So in our method, we have two for loops to generate a square room. And this simply loops from x equals minus half x uh, up until half x. And we do the same with the y value because the room size is a vector two in. So we have x and y value. And since we are using the half of the room, this room center position stays as a center point of this room. This is a pretty simple logic. We generate a vector to position based on the room center plus the offset generated by, by this for loop. And then we convert it to vector three int position int. Since we are using tile maps, we need to get the world to cell position. Uh, we pass the position that we have uh, calculated here and we get the position of the tile that we need to set as our room floor. So we add it to our room tiles. So our hash set that we have generated here, and then we set the tile on our room map, which is the tile map to this. Uh, so the position int to the room floor tile, which is the tile base reference. In the project, uh, we are using the tile map. So if I uh, disable it, you can see that I can enable and disable the tile map representing the floor of the room, as well as the path between those rooms. Now, what is important is that we are returning not the hash set itself, but the reference to what is called a room object. And it takes the center position as well as the hash set representing the floor. So what we have generated in this method. So the room class, let me go to the definition of this, is holding the data about the rooms. This is the constructor that takes the room center and the floor tiles, but we store much more here. We store the room center and the floor tiles, but also the near wall tiles up, down, left and right. So the tiles near each of the edges, as well as the corner, corner tiles references all as a vector to int as the hash it. And this will be important when we are processing all this data about the room so that we can know where should we place our props or the enemies. 
Again, you can check this class inside the GitHub repository. We have the inner tiles to place objects inside the uh, room, as well as we get the reference to the props positions and the props uh, game objects, as well as the position accessible from the path and the enemies in the room, so that you can easily delete those when we want to regenerate our dungeon. And this room will be stored in our uh, dungeon reference so the dungeon data that we have a uh, reference to in our uh, simple dungeon generation script and this dungeon data will store all the rooms so or all the data about each room as well as the data about our path and we have the reset method here of course we have also the reference to the player so we can uh, easily delete the player when we want to regenerate our dungeon and the reset method just do all of this so it loops for each room destroys all the uh, prop objects or the enemies that we are going to place soon and it generates the room and path list as new and destroys the player it will become more clear when we use this dungeon data to populate its room list and the path and so on with all the data that we generate. For now, let's go back to our simple dungeon generation method. And at the top, we had those rooms. I have explained uh, just before the generate rectangular room at method. We have created three rooms and all we need to do now is generate a path. Since path is represented as the hash set, and we want to add to this hash set new tiles, we call the union with method, which simply adds uh, some vector to int positions to an existing hash set collection. Since it will uh, eliminate duplicate values, it will be much more efficient to store our data about the path in this collection type. The method itself creates straight corridor, uh, takes in the center point of the uh, room that we want to start our path from and takes the uh, center point of the not another room that we want to connect to. And since it creates a straight uh, path, uh, this isn't very elaborate, but it will do the work for our um, example to create our connection between those rooms. So what we do here is again use, uh, use a hash set of vector to int corridor tiles equals new and we are going to populate it with the start position. We are going to populate it with the end position. Of course, it needs to be the vector uh, to int position. We set those tiles uh, as the path tiles using our room map set tile uh, converting the start position to vector 3 int and passing the path floor tile as the tile base and this is how we created this path and next all we need to do is calculate the direction in which we need to travel since this is a straight path so a straight line from one position to another and we then use a while loop while the vector to distance current position to the end position is greater than one we proceed with, by adding to the current position the direction uh, adding this uh, new position to the corridor tiles so our hash set and then we set room map set tile this current position to the path floor tile and we return this hash set of vector to int representing our path so our corridor Again, this is just an example uh, of how we can generate this. And this is why we are using those hashes because all we need to do now is call union with, and we are going to add those uh, new vector to int very efficiently to our existing hash set to our path, which is also a hash set of vector to int. And at the end, we are going to generate the dungeon collider. Basically what we need to do now is since we have this floor and this path generated by our other methods, let me change the alpha of this. We need to generate a collider around this dungeon so that our player cannot go out of the map. So this is what we are going to now generate. So an offset from those tiles that represent our dungeon, the path and the rooms. We need to now create an offset so find the tiles around this dungeon. So that's exactly what our generate dungeon collider method will do. And again, this is just for the sake of creating this example. Uh, so we create a hash set of vector to int dungeon tiles equals new hash set. And again, we are utilizing this collection because now we can run for each room in our dungeon data rooms. That is why we store it all in our dungeon data reference. And we call dungeon tiles, so our hash set union with room floor tiles. So we add all the floor tiles of each room to one hash set. 
Next we call Dungeon Tile Union uh, Tiles Union with Dungeon Data Path, so our corridors. So we get all the tiles that represent our dungeon. And next, all we need to do is create the, a new hash set representing the collider tiles. And here is where we are going to use those directions list. So we look for each vector to int tile position in our dungeon tiles. So each tile that represent our, represents our dungeon, we are going to look for each direction. So vector to int direction in four directions. As you might recall, this is the list of all the directions up, down, left and right. And we are going to simply create a temporary new position and we are going to check if our dungeon tiles, so the tiles representing the dungeon and the path do contain this new position. Again, since we are using the hash set, this is a very fast operation of checking if this uh, position is in our hash set or not. And if it is not, that it means a, it is the outline of our dungeon, so we can add it to our collider tiles that add the new position. And all we need to do now is for each vector to int position in our collider position, uh, collider tiles, we need to add our collider map set tile position to the room floor, floor tile so that it automatically will generate the collider. Okay, so this is the first step of our procedural generation, generating the dungeon layout. The next step that we want to perform is to analyze our dungeon and extract the information about each room. So which tiles are near, near the top edge, which tiles represents the corners. Since I have mentioned already that depending on what is the position, we want to place a different prop there. And of course, we want to know also which are the inner tiles, excluding the path, since we do not want to place any props on the path Let's take a break and in the next part I will explain how we are going to analyze those rooms. For now, if you are enjoying this tutorial, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, click the thanks button below. I would really appreciate it. See you in the next part.